last three videos that I made were mostly negative, with one of them starting an entire series about the worst films ever. I feel that my channel never gave off the energy that I was someone who's extremely critical of movies and likes to rant about the worst ones in existence, but someone who is very positive and likes to talk about the things that he enjoys. So I've decided that in between the months of the worst series, I would make the best series, where I talk about the best films made. Like before, I'll be taking suggestions. Like before, you will have the best chance of your suggestion getting through if you support me at the Disney tier. And like before, I'll only be doing animated films. So hi, my name is Animation Review, and today I'll be talking about how to train your dragon. This sets up the characters Astrid, Snotlout, and the twin. These are the only real problems with the films. They can be really annoying, but thankfully they don't put too much screen time, so it's not really a problem. Hiccup wants to kill a dragon so he can fit in. This cliche generally isn't that liked. It's not as hated as much as the lie revealed story, but it isn't that liked overall. So it'll be interesting how this story pans out. He manages to capture a Night Fury and the town doesn't believe him. This of course makes sense. No one's going to believe that Hiccup of all people captured the dragon that no one else has. So he goes home while the dragon hunters go out to capture and destroy the nest. They do that but before then Gobba convinces Stoic to let Hiccup go do dragon training. This scene not only has sharp comedy but also has a believable and convincing argument. Gobba knows that Hiccup would either become what everyone wants or stop and insist on it if he came. But Stoic understandably doesn't believe that Hiccup would be able to and is genuinely concerned that Hiccup would die. The other great conflict is with the dragons and the dragon hunters. This film doesn't really pick a side in terms of beliefs. The dragons never took humans, they were taking sheep and other animals. But the humans were blinded by fear, which turned into anger which turns into hate, which turns into a genocide of dragons. This is also portrayed on the dragon side as well, in what is possibly one of the best scenes, not just in this movie, but in animation over the decade. Hiccup is in the forest, looking for the dragon that he shot down. He knew that taking the dragon back was the key to being respected, but he couldn't. He saw the fear in the dragon's eyes as he approached with the dagger, but he couldn't do it. He knew what it was like to be scared like that, and so he frees him. And then the Night Fury leaps onto him, looking straight at Hiccup, a human who all previous beliefs had caused him to think evil, but was now saved by one. The score slows down as he battles with his beliefs. He doesn't kill, but he also doesn't immediately change his beliefs. He screeches at Hiccup as a way to tell himself that he wasn't changing beliefs, that he was normal but there was a burning conflict that started inside him. This scene is truly amazing. It's like the conflict in Darth Vader, done without any words. As he flies away, he falls into a pit, trying to escape, but Hiccup learns about him. Cut to that night at the hall. Hiccup is reading a book as the school darkens, shows how dangerous these dragons are, raising the stakes. Then it comes to the Night Fury. Nothing is known other than its danger. This dragon is something not to be messed with. Hiccup goes back to the dragon, but this time with food, though. The dragon, toothless, doesn't trust him at first. Hiccup needs to disarm himself first, of course, taking his dagger out and throwing it onto the lake. This mark of disarmament is finally what gets Toothless to trust him, but Hiccup doesn't trust Toothless. After generations of negative beliefs against dragons, Hiccup doesn't yet believe that dragons are just afraid. It's Toothless sharing his fish that gets Hiccup to see that dragons aren't dangerous, but just scared. He then tries to befriend Toothless. Toothless doesn't know what he's doing though, and as such gets scared, so he goes to the other end of the pit, where Hiccup gets curious about Toothless's tail. Toothless, on the other hand, is far more curious about Hiccup in general, the first nice person he ever met. While Hiccup draws Toothless in the sand, Toothless is fascinated about Hiccup is making one line after the other to create something. So he uses a tree and does the exact same thing, but less elegantly so. Hiccup needs to get out of this. Rudely ignores Toothless's work, but after some growls, Hiccup realises that he has to step around these lines, and after playing by Toothless's rules, this is what gets Toothless to fully trust him, and gets Hiccup to want to help him. 
he still doesn't know for sure what stops him from flying. So instead he gives Toothless fish for the time being to keep him alive. He then starts to learn things that help him in dragon training, from smoke deal to lights. These sorts of things make him better in dragon training because these things are known only by people who spend time with dragons, which is, of course, no one. This montage is followed up by a conversation about what happened to Gobba's leg and arm and where he accidentally mentions why Toothless can't fly. Thanks, Gobba! This is then followed up with Hiccup making a tail for Toothless, then adding it to Toothless. O falls and Hiccup continues to make more. Side note, I think this is actually the point where Hiccup gets better at the dragon training. This part is kind of fuzzy. I might be wrong though. He then wins the contest to kill the monstrous nightmare. This also shows Astrid's spiral into insanity, which can be really funny. It kind of makes me wish that Astrid was more of a side character like the others. It obviously wouldn't have been as captivating as what they did, but I think it would be more entertaining. At this fact, Hiccup decides to leave, where Astrid follows him suspiciously. This leads to a really great scene. Not as good as the other great scene, but full enough of comedy and wonder that it works really well. Astrid scares Toothless and then runs away, but Hiccup and Toothless get her to the top of a tree and they let her down. But Toothless isn't as gentle as Hiccup wanted. The character interactions in this scene are great, from you've got me, I've been making outfits, to thank you for nothing, you useless reptile. This comedy is great and it ends nicely as well, with Astrid trusting Toothless and being concerned about how Hiccup has to kill a dragon. Then this scene of great wit, excitement and emotion ends and turns into a scene of them finding out that there's a really evil dragon. That's the reason behind all the food being taken. I understand why they did it. They needed the third act and there was nothing for that. But this isn't the message that the other scenes of this film conveyed. And it takes away the dramatic impact of those other scenes a bit. This film was more intelligent than black and white, good versus bad. These dragons were more three-dimensional. They killed people because, like people, they were scared. But I digress. Hiccup then has to kill a monstrous nightmare, where he decides to show everyone what he's seen. But they don't give him a chance because they don't believe these dragons, who have been seen to kill humans for centuries, are actually just scared. So Stoic commands to stop the fight with a loud bang to the bar with the hammer. This unexpected noise causes the dragon to break its trust and attacks, leading the crowd to reaffirm their beliefs that dragons are just beasts that always go for the kill, when that's not true in the slightest. This then causes Toothless to sense what's happening from miles away and come to help? I can suspend my disbelief for that, I guess. Then Stoic finds out tells him about the Alpha Dragon, and Stoic then knows what to do to find the dragon. But Hiccup's thoughts are no longer with Toothless, but actually with his own father. Despite everything that has happened, and everything that's going to happen to Toothless, Hiccup loves his father and is more concerned for him than anyone else. This scene is good, but like the previous scene, it's a mix of amazing and not that good. The earlier parts of the movie painted each side as an equal and never said, these dragons are just scared and the humans definitely aren't. Why would they be scared? They're only fire-breathing, flying animals that could kill you in an instant. But here, it's showing that more with Hiccup saying, And we've killed thousands of them! But it's still got some very strong elements and it's really good. Hiccup is then left behind as a stoic goes to destroy the dragon nest. Hiccup gives everyone else there a dragon and they beat it. This movie is, of course, a masterpiece. I drank it 92 out of 100, but I have some noteworthy issues. The side characters are annoying, even though they do have a good line or two. This film is amazing at the start. They set everything up really well and the war is never blamed on anyone, and they do still carry that over, just not as well. That was my review on How to Train a Dragon. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you... And I... Oh. My name is Animation Review. That was my review on How to Train Your Dragon. I hope you enjoyed, and I bid you good night.